Welcome to AE Juice. In today's video, we're going to talk about History Timeline Constructor, some of the FAQs and how to use the product entirely. I'll also show you what comes in the pack so that you know what to do when you purchase the pack. All right, so let's get started. First, what you want to know is that this pack is completely compatible with different resolutions. So for example, I've got a 1080p version here and a 4K version of my timelines. Let's start with the 4K and we'll go to window. Let's go to extensions and go to the AE Juice Pack Manager 4. With our history timeline constructor selected, let's go ahead and just double click on one of these and let's assume we want to pick this one. Now, once that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and close this and you can see that this is completely taken up our 4K project here and it's fitting the screen really well and then if we go to our 1080p version here we'll go ahead and go to window extensions AE juice pack manager and then let's go ahead and import the same one all right and that's downloaded so we'll go ahead and close this so this is what it would look like in your 1080p project here. It populates it really well and covers the sides here so that it looks full and really good. Now the placeholders are empty. There are no pictures, which is okay because we can change that ourselves. We'll just go to window, go to essential graphics. And now you can see that we have all of our parameters here. And if I just scroll down this, you can see there's really a lot of options and customization. You can customize literally every single piece of text that you see here. So let's start with these placeholders here. I'm going to scroll all the way to the top. And then just so I can see my footage, I'm going to drag the essential graphics tab over. I'm going to go to the stock folder that I have here. And I'm just going to click and drag my desired element onto the empty box here or the placeholder. Once I've done that, you can also choose to scale to fit, scale to full. You can change these options depending on how it looks in the final result here. If you choose one of these options, for example, no scale, give it a few seconds and you can see that it's not going to fill the border up completely. So you might want to change that and let's say scale to fit. That'll work even better. And you can see it's going to populate the entire border of the placeholder, which looks really good. I like that. So let's move on. The second placeholder, we're going to do just the same thing. And you can see once you've given it a couple seconds, it'll go ahead and populate that top placeholder. Okay, so let's start customizing the text. And if I scroll down just a little bit, let's start with text number seven here, which is the title of history data here, if you take a close look. So let's go ahead and just change this. Once you've typed in your answer, click out of the box and it's gonna go ahead and update there. Very nice. So you can customize that. You can even customize the font. So if we scroll further down almost to the bottom here, you can see that we've got some parameters here that can change the overall look of what we're looking at. So for example, you can see there's a bit of noise in this image, which is totally normal and pretty cool part of the effect. But let's say you want to remove it completely. Let's just go ahead and put a zero there. I'm going to press enter and it's going to remove all that noise. Let's also say you want to remove the vignette effect. So let's put zero and press enter and it removes that vignette on the outside as well as the contrast, let's put that to zero. And then we'll also go ahead to the color correction here, put that to zero. And even the color correction strength, let's put that to zero as well. So you can see we're starting to get more of a clean look. Maybe it's more part of a computer screen, but you can see some lens distortion. So let's reduce that to zero. So you can see you can generate your own look and it looks really nice. Now, if you scroll further down here, you can see there's even some color options and you can choose to include or exclude frame blur, film burn, you know, fun, cool effects like that. If I scroll further down, you'll see that we will have other color options that we can use to change some of the color elements, which will look really nice. The default looks just fine as well. And in addition, you can change the color of the text if you decide that it's not dark enough or there's not enough contrast to your liking. Now, a lot of these text options here or the text positions will change where the text appears on screen. For example, let's assume you have even more text than this or maybe you have even less text than this. You want to reposition it so that it looks the way it should on the screen. You can adjust those with these position parameters here. Let's take a look at another example here. You can see that this option here looks pretty good and it's got similar look to a timeline effect. So once I've selected that and imported that into my sequence, it'll appear right here. Now with this layer selected and my essential graphics tab open, this can work very similar to the first example where you can drag in your asset onto the placeholder and that'll populate in the screen here. Now you can choose different ways this scales up and it'll adjust the way it looks on the frame border here. So let's go ahead and choose scale to 
fill and we'll see what that does. It scales it up so that it populates the entire frame of the border. So it's just depending on how you want it to look. Now, all of these text parameters here are going to appear in different parts of the timeline because it is a video. So there's other text here. And if I scroll further down in the timeline here, you'll see that there's text everywhere. And this text will correspond to a lot of that text in here. So if I scroll down a bit here, you can see that some of these are left blank. If you want to remove text from the screen here, simply delete it all and you won't see it on screen. So for example, let's say you don't want to see any of the background text here. Simply delete it from all of these boxes and it'll be removed from screen. So let's see an example here of changing the title. So currently this is the title, but let's go ahead and change it. And then once you've put in your new text, go ahead and click out of the box and it's going to go ahead and update. Now let's assume you want to reposition this so that it lines up with the left side of this text. That's going to be pretty straightforward. Assuming you're ready with the look of your text, you don't want to change any fonts, any sizes or anything like that. Make sure you do all of that before you adjust the position. So let's assume we're happy with the look of the text. I'm going to scroll down and let's keep going. You can choose to reposition the entire text in this template. You can move all of that, but I want to move the title independently of the date. So I'm going to undo that. So let's go ahead and scroll down further and I'm going to go to text to anchor point or you can do the position, which is right over here. Now, keep in mind that being able to find the position controls of each text might take a little bit of trial and error since there's a lot of options. But once you find it, you can go ahead and just reposition it and just do a little slowly. And if you want to do fine increments, you can hold control on your keyboard and you can click and drag this property here. Let's go ahead and move it just to the side a little bit. I'd say that looks pretty good there. Don't forget to save your work. And I'm pretty happy with that result. Very easy, straightforward with some huge customization. Let's take a look at the After Effects version of the History Timeline Constructor from AE Juice. AE Juice is a dynamic plugin for all of your assets to streamline your process and just make better looking results from your work. The first thing I want to demonstrate really quick is that this plugin is robust and accommodate any composition sequence that you might have. For example, 4K or 1080p, just regular HD compositions. Let's go ahead and start with the 4K. We'll go to Window, go to AE Juice Pack Manager, and then we'll go into History Timeline Constructor. You can see there's a lot of options here. And when you hover over them, there's a preview. So you can see exactly what they'll look like, but this won't always play the full animation of whatever's in that template because some of them might be long and you won't be able to see that entire sequence. You can see each of these are five seconds long, which is totally fine. And you'll get the idea of what your template will look like. So let's take a look at this one. You can see it looks really nice and I want to highlight a historical figure. This is a pretty good looking template for that. So I can go ahead and click this and I can click import and it'll import it into my current composition or I can double click it. Okay, so now you can see that it is in my sequence here. So I'm going to go ahead and close the pack manager. And if I scroll through this, you'll see that it actually is in here. There are no previews here, like you saw in the five second preview in the AE Juice Pack Manager, simply because those are just placeholders. So you can see that it has populated our 4K sequence perfectly and it looks really good. Now in a 1080 sequence here, again, we'll just go ahead to the AE Juice Pack Manager. We'll import that same one by double clicking. And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And you'll see that if I scrub through this, it'll show up and it has again populated my sequence correctly. So let's start customizing this. I'm going to go ahead and double click my layer here. So you can see that it opens a new composition here. And with the controls layer selected, I can see all of these options that will allow me to customize this entire template. So if I want to, I can do control A and I will just click the drop down arrow and it'll show me all of my options that I have here. If I just click out of this real quick, you'll see that it'll deselect all of them because if I change a parameter here, I only want to do this one instead of adjusting all of them at once. So let's say I want to change the noise. For some reason, I want to have a different look and we want to remove the noise from this image. I'll go ahead and put zero in there. That removes the noise. I can also choose to remove the vignette and some other stylistic templates that I have here, I can choose depending on my personal taste. Now, if I want to change the title and text here, Let's go ahead to the text options. And these two blue ones here are the main text, which has been highlighted here. That's pretty cool. And you can see these two blue ones are the main text, which is the 
main title and the secondary title. And it's been highlighted here to make it easy to find. And if I select it, you can see that here. Or if I hide it, you can see which one that is. All of these other text parameters are other text you can see in the background here. But that is not including the placeholder text that you see here. That will be adjusted with the placeholders in just a few minutes. Let's first change the text. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this layer. And you can see the text is right here. So if I select this text, I'll double click it and type in my new text. Then once I've changed that, I can go back to my previous composition. And it's it's going to go ahead and update. Now let's assume that I want to adjust this text so that it is aligned with the top text here on the left. First what I'm doing is click controls. I'm going to scroll to where I see text position X and I'm just going to adjust that position until I've aligned the text with that top text. Let's assume I'm happy with that. However, the background element here is not looking right. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's go to the text box width and let's go ahead and reduce that. And it's going to go ahead and take that down. And we're going to just align it with the top one just so that it looks a bit more uniform and it's supposed to be in that area. So that's looking pretty nice. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's change the placeholder here to something that we want to customize. So first, let's go to the placeholder here. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And we can just drag and drop our picture or video into this sequence. I'm going to scale it down by pressing S on the keyboard and just adjusting this. And I'll just reposition it however I like. Once I go back to that previous sequence, you'll see that it's going to go ahead and update my foreground placeholder. But let's assume we want to adjust the background too to something else. So we'll go to our placeholder too. Let's go ahead and import our picture or video. And I'm going to press S on the keyboard and just scale that up. Now I want to go back into my previous sequence. That's going to update the background as well. That's looking pretty good. Keep in mind that everything you see in this screen here, in this template, you can customize, including the camera position if you're a more advanced user. In Premiere Pro, it's a very similar situation. When you go to the controls, you can change literally everything that you see on this template, which is really nice, including the position of the text and what it says, down to the color of the foreground elements, such as this stamp. Keep in mind that all the text and dates are editable, so you can change whatever text is on screen, including the text in the background. The images and videos that are in the promo or the preview video are not included. Those are just examples to show you what it can all look like. So they work as a placeholder for you, which is really nice because then you can see a bird's eye view of what your product will look like. Now, many people want to be able to use AE Juice offline, which is totally fine. And there's two ways to do this. First, you can download all of your assets from your account when you register for After Effects, Project Mogots, or video files. You can store them on your computer when you're offline, uh, but the pack manager has a second way to do this. So here's how you do it in After Effects and Premiere Pro. First, what you want to do is go to Window, and then we're going to go to Extensions, AE Juice Pack Manager 4. And then what you can do is once you've picked the pack that you want to download, by the way, it gives you a preview of it when you hover over it, which is pretty cool. We'll go ahead and click on that. And then you can see all of the options here and there's quite a lot of them. But when you want to make this available offline, you just click the download button here and then it's going to download everything that's in this pack so that it's offline on your computer. Just keep in mind that you do need to connect to the internet at least once a month for this to continue to stay active, which for most people isn't going to be an issue anyways. So you can see the progress bar here. It's just over half a gigabyte big, which is actually pretty small considering the pack, which is actually really nice because it's super compact and it doesn't take up a lot of space on your computer. All right, so now that you've downloaded all your packs and you'll know that by the download button being invisible or you can't see it anymore. Now we can really see what we have in this pack and you can use it offline. Now often people want to use the same template and they don't want to keep changing the text to accommodate to what they have. And you can do this simply when you edit the text in any template that you have here. It's also going to save the changes that you make to any of the images or color and it'll save that for the future. So let's illustrate this a little further. Let's go ahead and say we want to use this template multiple times so that we don't have to constantly edit the same thing every time to get the same result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and go to the edit button and then you'll go to this page. Now, keep in mind that in Premiere Pro, you cannot change the footage templates. You have to do that with the Essential Graphics tab, which is OK, because those are click and drag and it'll take you 10 seconds to do each one. So with here, you can change all of your text parameters in these templates. 
and also adjust their positions and so forth, as well as their color and anything else. And when you click the save settings button here, it's going to go ahead and save it and just choose somewhere on your computer where you would like to save that too. Now, let's go ahead and assume that you've saved it to your computer and you wanna reuse this template in a future project. So when you go ahead and click on it, you can go ahead and do edit. And then what you can do is click the load settings button and locate that saved project wherever you saved it on your computer. So once you've loaded that, go ahead and click OK, and you can click Import, or you can just double click that to import that into your project. Now in After Effects, the process works in a similar way. First, what you wanna do is go ahead and import whichever template you wanna save for the future. And you can see that I've imported this one here. And if I just click off of it for just a second, I'm gonna show you why. So let's go ahead and click the Edit button. And you can see there's currently no templates that have been selected. So what we need to do is select that template you just imported. And if you give it a second, it's gonna go ahead and populate with all the parameters here. Once it's done so, you can go ahead and make all of your changes, and then you can go ahead and click OK. Now we can close the AE Juice Pack Manager and it'll be populated in here. Now, one of the big questions are, can you use your own fonts or other custom fonts in this template? And the answer is yes, you can. Because this template is built from the ground up, you have full customization for your font in your text. So whether in your Premiere Pro and you want a seamless experience when adjusting templates to speed up your workflow and just make your results look better, or if you're in After Effects and you're a more advanced user and you want to customize every fine little detail and maybe change it up completely, you have all those options with AE Juice's History Timeline Constructor Pack and it'll just bring your projects to life. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future products, please let us know in the comments down below. We really hope you enjoyed this video, and if it was helpful, consider leaving a like. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time, and stay creative.